Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to bounce out your uh, Logic project to turn it into an audio file and also into an MP3 so that you can either email it uh, to people or you can burn it onto CD. So we're going to have a little look uh, at the time of this. We'll see that it's the track's very short, just knock something together. It's only about a minute long. Uh, however, the project doesn't really kind of finish when the blocks finish, when the MIDI regions and audio regions stop playing. You still kind of hear some sound because there's some effects and automation on those particular tracks that make the ends of the tracks sustain for a little bit longer with some delay and reverb, etc. So some very important things that we need to kind of realise is that if you have any tracks with effects on that are at the end of your arrangement, you need to give enough space when you bounce out the tracks that it doesn't cut off the reverb tails or the endings of, of notes or delay lines. So we're just going to go into the mixer section and have a playthrough of the track. And it's really, really important to make sure that the master output, output one and two, doesn't clip and doesn't distort. You can see there it's already gone into distortion. At this point in the track you can actually hear the distortions quite um, pronounced on the bass in particular. And also one of the other tracks was clipping as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight all of the uh, faders and check the loudest point which was that, that last section and we're going to just drag down some of the levels to make sure that we don't clip during playback because if we don't clip during playback we won't clip when we kind of render this to an audio file. So by highlighting all of the mixer strips together and just dragging them down, they drag them down at, into a kind of relative scale so all your internal balances don't get kind of messed up. So have a little look here now. Okay, so that track was still clipping, so we'll just bring the audio down of all the faders again. And like I said, it brings it down in scale. And we'll just see how it sounds now. Okay, so we haven't got any clipping on the individual tracks, but when you put them all together, they still distort on the output channel strip. And that's important to, to stop that from happening. So we're just going to employ a, a gain utility, which you can just get from the normal inserts. Go down to utility, click gain, and then we'll just drag down the volume coming into that master channel and test it again. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of headroom there between the kind of loudest point and the point of sort of digital distortion, which is 0.1 of a decibel over 0 dB. So I'm just going to make up for that headroom and try and get the signal a little bit louder, but still not so loud that it actually distorts on the channel strip. Okay, that's perfect.
So we can get rid of the mixer section and the plugin. And we can now look at this cycle locator section at the top here, which you can just click on or click at the bottom of the transport, the green button that's highlighted now with the kind of circle. And we're just going to highlight all of the regions and click set locators, which will set our left and right locators uh, for us manually. But as we kind of discussed earlier, at the end, there's a sort of delay and reverb line that carries on for a little bit. And the track doesn't actually go to sort of complete silence until a few bars after. And we just need to make sure at the very beginning that nothing like this has happened, that you haven't kind of truncated the first few lines as well. It's really important to make sure that the first part of your arrangement plays at the beginning perfectly without any sort of errors and that the ends of the reverb tails etc don't get truncated. So now we're going to go to the bounce button. You can also find it by file bounce as well, file export. And we're just going to click the triangle to go to our little house, go to music, go to my folder, go to the project folder of this and then go to the bounces folder within that. And then we're just going to title the track And once that's done, we're going to choose the file format. So destination is PCM. We're going to keep it as an AIF, change the resolution to 16 bit, because that's what uh, CDs work at. Keep the sample rate of 44.1, file type inf interleaved, and we don't want any dithering. We'll tick the normalize box. And then we'll also create an MP3 simultaneously. So you click the mp3 icon, change the uh, bit rate from the stereo to 320 kilobytes per second because that's the kind of best quality mp3 and then just click bounce. And depending on the kind of complexity of your track and how many plugins and synths you use it might take much longer than that or it might be much quicker. So we're just going to save the project file, close it and now go in Finder and go and find the bounce that we created. So we go to our music folder, logic, project file, and then go bounce uh, to the bounces folder. And then you'll see that there's a .AIF version and a .MP3 version. And if you just right click it, you can open it up with QuickTime Player just to check that it's kind of worked okay. And the important part is to check the beginning and ends really. And as you can see, there's a couple of seconds of silence afterwards, which nobody really minds. But if you cut those reverb tails off, you really do kind of notice it. Also, if you see and you click in Finder on the MP3, if the file is under 10 megabytes, you can easily email it for the college email. If, and that's it.